everything else will do. Welcome Spiritual Warriors, back to another installment to a field guide to spiritual warfare at blogspot.com. Um, I have an interesting topic I want to cover today. I know I covered it in my book, An Advanced Field Guide Spiritual Warfare and Exorcism. Um, I have a unique opportunity, I don't know if it's opportunity or, or time for a discussion right now to help fill you guys in on walk you through stuff and how things go um, when you receive somebody that's demonically possessed. Um, it's not often. A lot of times I do in my email bins and people contact me my, where I work for counseling that help help. I'm demonically possessed or I have demons, I need deliverance, I need exorcism, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times as a counselor you know when it's a stronghold mental issue or if it's something demonic. So in the back of my mind it's always the last thing I'm going to go to is something demonic. Um, in this case, in a recent case, it was brought to my attention. Like I said, the, the demonic cases we get that are possession are few and far between, but I do get them. Um, and this one happened to show up recently, so I want to throw out their ideas, thoughts, and just give you guys um, some feedback on what this looks like and when it happens and what to do. Currently, I'm in the process of bringing in one individual. I was um, it's a young individual in their teens. And they were not dabbling in the occult. They were highly involved in the occult in the local coven. Um, they laid down in, you know, blood pentagrams, things like that. Um, some in, some powerful demons. And when the individual was brought to me for counseling, for a, a, actually another issue, I was told there were spirits on board. So I decided just to evaluate this, see if you know basic deliverance will work or what will happen. As I talked to the individual, the first thing I said, well, I know you're a Christian counselor. I don't want to hear anything about God. It's like, well, okay, that's fine and all. Um, I can do that. I just want to get to the root of the problem they actually came in for. And as he told me that, I could tell. I usually look for what's called dissociation in their eyes, switching up parts. But what happened to turn back at me was looking at me, it was a demon. Um, and this I can know because I've been around this long enough going, hmm, this is interesting. And at that moment, I could feel the witchcraft being thrown on me. Like I said, I also work with ritual abuse survivors. So I know sometimes they throw witch, some of the parts are loyal, they'll throw witchcraft on me during counseling sessions. And this is what it felt like, but this was far more intense. But they were flinging on me. Um, so it turned to a counter counter and I go, well, I guess you guys notice it's not working on me. So you got, I'm going to order you guys in the name of Jesus Christ to stop it. And I want this individual's core identity brought back up. And... At that point, the eyes rolled in the back of the head, and I don't know, most of you know me, I had some surgery back in December. These things went straight for where my, my um, surgery was, and just started jabbing and um, poking at it, and like, that's it, that's enough. Um, so it turned to a power encounter to shut this thing down, and it got shut down. They were freaking out. When I asked the individual, what's going on now, after we completed this, he goes, well, they're buzzing like crazy in my head, and they hate you. I go, well, okay, that's fine. Um, so I brought the core identity person back up and he was able to speak with me. At that point, I did know I had a demonic possession case. All the things were adding up right there. Um, the demons presented themselves. They couldn't be in the same room as somebody that did exorcisms. It just stirs them up. Um, usually that's the first thing I notice when people go, help, I need, de I have demons, help me, help me, and there's nothing going on. It's a flatliner in the room. It's like, well, that's one of them. But these things get stirred up, especially possession, they get stirred up right away. Um, so what do we do from here? Why did I not proceed immediately into an exorcism? Um, first of all, there's so much junk in churches about exorcisms and on TV. Um, I don't, probably saw the BBC thing about, you know, exorcists are charlatans and stuff. So I, I take my time to figure out what the heck's going on first. So I get into it. Um, when w I gave him a gap, I said, I need you to walk away from the occult. He goes, I can't do that. And I said, let's give it a week. And I want you to... Just think in your head, the core person in there, you need to walk away from the occult because this is getting bad. What you have is bad. Your whole will is compromised. You can't make decisions on your own. They're doing it for you. He goes, well, I won't choose what you want me to choose. I said, well, right now I just need you to choose to walk away from the occult. We'll work on that. So we agreed to meet in another week. Um, during that time, I was prayed to be released in this battle. I was also praying for more revelation on what's going on with this person. I contacted my posse and told them just to pray for this person. I'll get to this in a minute. Um, however, that night after the meeting, when I went home, went to bed, um, 
um, me and the missus were, were laying in bed, you know, and all of a sudden the light switch goes on. Wham! I go. And um, it wasn't a, just an electrical issue. Usually they could play with the electricity. This one, they took the light switch and flicked it on full. Um, so I realized it was a physical manifestation going on here, and I knew it was from, because our house is clean. We never have stuff like this going on. It's locked down with the Holy Spirit. Um, this was an incursion. I got up and I bound it and I ordered it to get out of my house immediately. And the missus said she saw this thing bolt out the window. She saw it bolt this time. Usually I get to see him. She saw it bolt out the window and leave. Um, and we haven't had an incident yet and since. And they said we lock it down. There's a good, good temperament, a Holy Spirit in our house. You can feel it. Good environment. But they've been trying to nickel and dime us other stuff in the property. We've been having to pray it off and shut it down. You know, so the war is going on. Keep in mind, I'm working with this young man. I have not stepped into battle yet with him have not. And I told him, I'm not stepping in the belly up with you. I want you to decide, you know, come back in a week and tell me, do you want to step out of this? Because you cannot go gung-ho on an exorcism or deliverance won't work right now. Go go read Mark 9. This is the point where we're talking about Mark 9, 29. These come out with fasting and prayer. That's where we're at. I cannot jump into this fight when he is not on board. Two reasons. First of all, if he's not on board, we know from Matthew, the nasty ones come back sevenfold. Nastier ones. Okay, these are already nasty things in him right now. These are familiar spirits. Um, how the possession works is the familiar spirits are inside him right now, and they've got probably a leisure or something sitting in his closet waiting to come in to possess him through the familiar spirits, and he's got to give in to it. He's, 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 his little walls are falling right now, which is why I need his free choice to choose to walk away from the occult first. If we can get him there, then I can start working with him, you know, in other aspects. He wasn't there yet. So I didn't do any war friends, step into it. I just actually had my intercessor friends pray for him because they know how to, because they work with me and they know what to do. Especially the people in my office who I work with. Um, the person that runs the counseling center is a you know, highly spiritual woman. She knows how to pray too. So we, you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by great people who know how to do this, very experienced, mature, spiritual people. Um, so we're not in the battle yet. Nowhere near the battle. They're gonna start. They're gonna. They're like gangbangers. They're gonna go spray paint some stuff. And that's what I tried to do to my house, and it didn't happen. I kicked them out. Um, how do we pray for these people? I treat it like it's a mental affliction that needs healing. However, it's a spiritual affliction, and you're going, how? How do you make this thing? Well, I'm treating it as a, a physical affliction, like, like it'd be stage four cancer. You need to pray for healing, not warfare yet. You need to pray for healing for this individual and go at it like they have stage 4 cancer because it's pretty darn similar to it. It's it, it could be terminal if it's not done properly. For their healing. You pray for their healing. You pray for their core identity to come up so they can fight this thing. That's what needs to take place for an exorcism. Their core identity must come up and it must be their free will. Their free will must come back for this. Otherwise, it's a no-go. You can't do it. Um, so fasting and prayer, lots of it. This could go on for months. Um, when the person came back to meet me after the week, they were they wouldn't even come into the office because it was so prayed up. The demons are freaking out. I had to walk to their front door and talk to the person. They went step in the office. You know, it was one of those situations going on. Um, so, just because you prayed and fasted for a day or for a week, it's not gonna it's not gonna sway them. You're praying to weaken down the powers that's that's compromised their minds. Okay. It's not a spiritual warfare thing. You're not binding demons. You're not binding principalities. In fact, if you have intercessors that are binding principalities and warning the second heaven, get them the heck off your prayer team because they're going to make things worse. They do not know what they're doing. That's a false teaching that's going on in the charismatic church right now. You know, kick them off. They're done. You, you can't tolerate stuff like that right now. Um, I have a hard time, too, working sometimes with pastors because they have their PhDs or they don't want to be told how to do this and they've never done this before. I go, go look at Mark 9.29. That's where we're at. You have to have people that have done this before walked through this and we do get people back but it's all a very long battle it's a horrible long battle um like i said the, the two hardest prayers to do right now are people that are in stage four cancer and souls that are on the verge of being fully compromised and mildly possessed because it's a vigil it's a vigil prayer that goes on for months for that healing and we're praying for an inner healing that the person's core identity soul comes up and chooses they choose to walk away from the occult and eventually they need to choose Jesus. I mean, that's actually the way out. Um, they, they figure it out. Um, they, sometimes they come in their own re recognition, you know, and walk into a church going, okay, I'm done. I, I need help with this. That, that's where we want to get them to. We just leave them alone, let them do what they need to do. Occasionally come in and counsel them and help them out when they need help out where they're walking in life. And 
that's it. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we're at with this case right now. Um, as for me, like I said, it's I see these guys on the internet, the Order of Exorcists, or these guys, uh, the <laughs> Star of Solomon, or this garbage you're using. I feel sorry if you brought those people into battle. Those aren't those aren't the type of people. You need a spiritual person um, who's spiritually mature. It's not the Kabbalah and the powers of Solomon that drive out demons. What we're looking for, preparing for, is a battle of faith. Um, my mind's literally a battleship. I know how dark it can go for a fight. It's like I've already been in the ring several times, and I have to prepare myself for it. Prepare myself for darkness. Um, and just start pushing out, you know, all thoughts. You know, I'm going to get start bombarded with stuff. They're going to try to put strongholds on me and everything else. Um, send me to dark places in my mind. I have to learn battle. Not learn to. I've, I've done it. So I'm in preparation right now to put up the right fences. And just stay deep, deep in prayer with Jesus Christ. The indwelling Jesus in me. And there's a Father in Heaven and the Holy Spirit. And I'm surrounded by them for protection. That's it. A lot of churches come. Do you need covering? you need covering? Your covering is not going to work against this. This is going to be an all-out clash against darkness, and it's, it's not Jesus versus the devil. It's Jesus just smashes the devil hands down. Um, and you have to have the faith, that no matter how dark it goes, that Jesus wins hands down. And a lot of churches don't walk in that faith. That's, that's a sad thing to say right now. Um, faith is you totally trust Jesus that, you know, whatever happens, you will make it through. What was the movie Gladiator with Russell Crowe? Um, he was training new gladiators who came in the ring with them, and he had them get in this formation with like these spears sticking out. And he pointed at these door lions, and he goes, no matter what comes out of there, you stand your ground. That sums up this ministry. No matter what comes through those doors, you stand your ground. And a lot of times, you're coming alongside a, a person whose will is compromised, and you're throwing the ring with them. And you're going to fight a clash for the safety of their soul to come back from whatever the hell, little hell they're in. Um, this person explained that when their identity gets pushed down, it gets pushed down to a space of absolute darkness with grinding of teeth. Where have we heard that before? Um, so yeah, the demons know scripture. You know, all these people around doing their little sage swiping and all this other stuff, and they're voodoo and all this stuff. This is, and he, he said, this, eh, no, this isn't going to bring this person back from there. They have to choose. And we have, like I said, the battleships offshore right now, fully loaded, free to blow the car out of these things it's just we need that person to make a choice and that's what happens during the exorcisms um, we sell this weird stuff on TV like no that person has to make a choice to choose to walk out of their darkness and their sin and when they're ready to do that on their own and choose Jesus little less when all hell breaks loose or breaks off and it's a dark fight so anyway um, I thought I'd update you guys because that's where we're at in this fight right now and where I'm at and what's going on. I'm already feeling the oppression, but, you know, I'm peeling it off. I have friends around me. I kept them on, on guard, too. Like, if I look different, something's wrong, you know, step in and tell me. But um, like I said that the fight's starting. Um, I don't bring other people into this. I only bring the people, like I said, the old gunfighters. We're the old gunfighters. We've been through this before. Um, and I have friends who know how to pray, and I've already contacted them. And I don't bring new people in on this just at all. Um, if God wants you here, he'll bring you here. Just like if God wanted me to be a worship leader, he'll be a worship leader. I can't sing, so I'm not in stage as a worship leader, all right? I guess if you can't sing, you get to do exorcisms. I guess that's how it works. I don't know. Anyhow, um, yeah, if you're not brought into this, don't jump into this. Find somebody that will help you. Um, again, but if you have somebody that, that's in a similar situation, um, don't self-evaluate. Make sure somebody else evaluates them who has seen this before and what this looks like. I get too many emails, help, help this person demonized or not. It turns out to be dissociation or, or trauma. You know, you have to understand the full spectrum of the mental issues that go on in the consciousness, whether it be physical or it's, um, you know, caboreal, like in the, in, the, in the brain, or the, I mean, the consciousness, or if it's something spiritual or all the above, you have to be able to break up which is which and identify them. Anyhow, um, I thought I'd throw this out to you for you guys to just, you know, it's edification. I'll try to update some more as things go on just to give you guys a, a, a good idea of what this looks like and what we go through to deal with this. So right now we're in the wait and hold. Um, we have people out there praying and, and, you know, fasting. It could go on for months, praying and fasting. Three months, four months, whatever it takes for that individual to break and decide they want Jesus. That's just, just the way it is. And if they don't, they don't. 
you know, they got to walk. Um, we can only make it worse. If they don't choose Jesus, it gets worse. Anyhow, um, that should do it. And I hope some of the stuff made sense. If you have any comments, feel free to make comments down at the blog. And I will get back to you. Have a great Sunday afternoon. It's sunny here where I'm at in California. God bless you guys. Bye.